In London is Marwan Bashara, our senior political analyst. As Hoda outlined there, Marwan, there are so many different possibilities here. In your view, what is the most likely? And I know that's asking you to get the crystal ball out, but still, tell us what you think. It's actually what I said only a few moments after the exit poll last night. And I think, realistically speaking, there's only one option left, short of a third election within a year. And that option is a so-called national Jewish unity government between white and blue party and the Likud party, perhaps with other center-right parties like Israel Biteno, the overwhelming Russian uh, party led by uh, Avigdor Lieberman. Narrow coalition governments led by Likud or by uh, white and blue party is not possible. The math does not add up. With Lieberman uh, insisting that he will not join uh, a Netanyahu-led government with the religious right, I think uh, the possibility of any narrow government is no longer there. Now, national unity government or national Jewish unity government, of course, is going to be um, difficult. The talks are going to be long and protracted. And my guess is uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu could not be a leader of any such unity government. Uh, white and blue party would not accept him, especially with indictment uh, overshadowing his future uh, as a leader. Uh, and I think uh, in that sense, and here I am making another, if you will, educated guess, mm -hmm. that in the next few days we will start seeing cracks within the Likud party itself, people saying that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has basically uh, run his course, mm. that he led the Likud to a non-victory or perhaps defeat if he gets less uh, votes than Blue and White Party. And then we will start seeing a whole different uh, political scene in Israel. Marwan, what is it about Israeli politics that makes it quite so fractured at the moment? Is it the, the personalities? Is it the direction they want to take the country in? Is it voter apathy? Is it actually all of those things? It's actually uh, something much deeper than that, because we in the media, and that's normal, and that's what our viewers want to know, is who won the horse race? Mm. Who's going to be the next prime minister of Israel? So that's a very reasonable thing to answer. But when you look more globally at the transformation of Israel over the last 50 or 70 years, you will notice something a bit different. And you notice that there is a certain consistency in how Israel moves uh, forward, or if you will, backward, but certainly in terms of years forward. And that is, uh, I'll give you a couple of very quick examples. Mm -hmm. One, the two uh, weakest parties today in Israel is the so-called left and labor Zionist parties. These two parties together have earned basically around 11 seats, less than the Arab blessed. Those 11 seats by labor and merits and their allies uh, are basically the lowest labor Zionism or left Zionism has ever earned in its history. In fact, for our viewers around the world, let me say this. The first three decades of the history of Israel, labor Zionism has dominated every single government until 1977. That same labor Zionism today commands less than 10 percent of the parliamentary seats. So. What you see here is the center uh, labor and left Zionism have lost completely. And this election confirms this trend. On the other hand, while Netanyahu has or may be losing his seat as prime minister, the right in Israel has been consistently on the rise since 1977. And what you have today is three quarters of the seats in parliament are dominated either by extreme centrist or religious right parties. There is no more really left Zionism left. And if there's anything, there's secular Zionism or atheist Zionism, if you will. But think about it for a second, come on. We talked about secular Zionism, but those secularists in the blue and, part, blue and white party, for example, they don't want to have kosher food. They don't, they, uh, uh, I mean, they do want to have kosher food. They do want to drive their cars on the Sabbath, on Saturday. 
But they insist that God has given the Jewish people what we call Palestine, or what the Palestinians call their homeland. So it's a bit paradoxical. On the one hand, they call themselves seculars or even atheists, but they still insist that this is a promised land for the Jews. Mawan Bashar is our senior political analyst in London uh, on the Israeli elections. Thank you, Mawan.